Okay, so in the last episode you saw me install the intercooler. In the episode before that you saw me install the Eaton MP45 supercharger. So in this episode I need to get all the pipe work sorted out. So I need to get pipe work from the air filter to the supercharger, from the supercharger to the intercooler, and then from the intercooler to the throttle body. Let's do it. Okay, so sorting out intake piping can be one of the more head-scratching parts to any supercharger or turbocharger conversion because potentially you've got a lot of stuff to navigate in the engine bay to get your pipe work from A to B. But thankfully though, you have endless options when it comes to aluminium pipes and silicon elbows. So there usually is a workaround for your setup. You just need to figure out what it is, which brings me nicely to this table of parts here. Now this is what I have purchased for my build after a good bit of measuring up and some trial and error along the way. Now I'm going to go into all this in more detail later in the episode but for now though let's do a quick budget recap. So everything you see on this table here that includes the aluminium pipe, the silicone elbows, uh, it includes the air filter, the clamps, uh, it even includes the inlet air temperature bung and the cost for getting that welded up. It's all in this price which is £160, which brings our total spend now to £1,834, which I know it's a little bit over the £1,750 that I quoted at the beginning of this series, but I am selling some parts, so stay tuned for the end of the series where I'm going to do a final cost breakdown. Right, with that out of the way, let's get this intake piping installed. Okay, let's start with the air filter to the supercharger section. Now, part of this was actually included in the G19 kit. The red 45 degree elbow and the 90 degree aluminium pipe. So, with that installed, I just need to get from that section to the area behind the passenger headlight where I've chosen to mount the air filter. And that's because there's a little opening behind here for fresh air to get to the filter itself. Now, the filter is the same filter I was using previously on my DIY naturally aspirated intake, which which cost me £60 and I have included that in the £160 for this episode. So in order to use this K&N comb filter I've had to use the MAF sensor body as an adapter between the filter and the pipework. Don't panic it's not plugged in I know I don't need to use it uh, technically but it literally is there as an adapter. But the other handy thing about the MAF sensor is it has two small bolt holes so I've fabbed a small bracket here to attach it to the inner wheel well to keep the filter nice and secure. And from there I've got a three and three quarter to three and a quarter inch reducer going to a 45 degree aluminium bend which is then connected to the G19 inlet piping with a straight coupler and that about takes care of the precharger piping. Actually the other part worth mentioning at this point is the bypass valve which currently has an air filter attached that was provided in the G19 kit. Now in an ideal world you'd have this teed back into the inlet piping which I may well do in the future but for now though the filter will be okay. So that's just stuck on the end of the bypass and secured in place with a jubilee clip. Right, so I've taken care of the pre-charger stuff, so let's move on to post-charger. And first up, I need to get pipe work from the supercharger to the intercooler, which is actually the most simple part of this job. And all I've used for this is a straight section of two and a quarter inch aluminium pipe, which is connected to the outlet of the supercharger by a hump connector, just to allow a little bit of movement, and then to the intercooler by a 90 degree reducer elbow, which goes from two and a quarter inch to two and three quarter inch. And this is pushed directly onto the inlet of the intercooler. Now you may also notice I rolled the end of the aluminium pipe so it can't be blown off under boost and I did this with my homemade pipe swadger as I like to call it which I made for under £10 which has done a pretty nice job. So if you want to see that thing in more detail and potentially make your own click the Tectic link at the top of the screen. So now we've just got to get from the intercooler to the throttle body which essentially consists of another silicone elbow on the outlet of the intercooler the same as what's on the inlet leading into another straight section of two and a quarter inch aluminium pipe then a silicone reducer 
closer to the two and a half inch throttle body. Now the complication of this section of pipe was I needed to firstly install a bung for the inlet air temperature sensor. So that's basically an M14 bung welded onto the side of the pipe here. And then I also needed the flange for the blow off valve welding on as well, which I'll show in more detail when I install the inlet air temperature sensor, the blow off valve and the boost gauge in the next episode. Cool. So we've now got the intake pipe work completed and it's all secured in place by quality Jubilee clips. Right, moving on, the last thing I want to show you guys is the vacuum line I had to run from the intake to the mini bypass valve to ensure it opens up under vacuum because in stock form, it takes the reference directly before the valve, which is no good in this setup because of where the throttle body is located. So I've run a three millimeter vacuum line all the way from the inlet manifold following the same path as the map line until it gets to here where I've teed off it. So one line is going back into the cabin. Don't worry about that for now. And then the other line runs to the diaphragm on the bypass valve so when the intake sees vacuum this bypass should open and allow air to bypass the rotors of the supercharger hence bypass valve the other outlet I've just blanked off and that about does it for the bypass valve so there we go, that's the intake piping taken care of and we are so close to finishing this build now, I can almost taste it. So in next episode, I need to get the blow off valve installed, I need to get the inlet air temperature sensor installed and the boost gauge installed as well. And then after that, I just need to get a belt on the thing basically because the 1260 belt supplied in the G19 kit is too long because I've used a cabs reduction pulley. So I just need to figure out the correct length which shouldn't be too difficult. So if you wanna stay up to date with this build and see its conclusion which is not far off now at all don't forget to subscribe to the channel and if you enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up thanks and i'll see you in the next episode